the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you, Jesus, that you are our light and our guide, steadfast, faithful and true. We turn our hearts and minds to you, Son of God. And John and Margaret, we thank you again for helping us to do that through your beautiful music. Friends, welcome to worship at St. Stephen's. Thank you for joining us on this special day. Firstly, this being the first Sunday of the month means today is a communion Sunday. And if you aren't already prepared, you might want to pause this recording to go and prepare the elements of bread and either wine or juice so that you can participate fully in the Eucharist later in the service. Secondly, today marks a momentous juncture in this community of faith. We welcome and congratulate the Reverend Diane Collery as she takes her place here as Senior Minister. And we are looking forward to the time when we can have an appropriate covenanting service. While we've been fortunate to have Di on ministry staff for 12 years now, we look forward to how God intends to further his kingdom through her work. The author of the letter to the Hebrews in chapter 13 encourages us. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. Church, will you pray with me now? for Diane and St. Stephen's. Heavenly Holy God, you are good. You created the heavens, the earth, and everything in them. And you created your people to love and to be loved. We praise you and lift our hearts to you in gratitude that you call us to be your people of grace. We give thanks for those who have mentored us, the women and men in our lives who were our teachers, who said the turning words of encouragement when we needed them the most. We give thanks for this church that has seen and embraced so much change. And for all those who have sustained this community of faith for many years past and for generations to come. Today, we give you all honour, glory and praise for the leadership gift you have given us here at St Stephen's in the person of your gifted servant, Diane. Lord Jesus, we have watched in wonder over the years as you have called, inspired, enabled and equipped your daughter to step into the role of shepherd in this branch of your church. We are fascinated to see her unusual journey continue and unfold as we have been privileged to watch you work and die from the beginning of her faith in you. Jehovah Jireh, our provider, you have grown many kingdom qualities in Diane already. Yet we pray today, Holy Spirit, that you further bless Diane with gifts to fulfill her purpose of furthering your kingdom to have wisdom and courage, to be steadfast, faith-filled, gracious and kingdom-focused. We pray that you continue to renew Diane's strength through the frequent nourishment of your living water and daily bread. Bless Diane and Simon's family with love and support strengthening their relationships in their family, in their church, and with you. Protect them all from the interference of the evil one. May we, your people of St. Stephen's United, commit to follow Jesus Christ 
through Diane's guidance to encourage her, be unified, gracious, loving and grateful in support of our leader. Now the God of peace, who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant, even Jesus our Lord, equip Diane in every good thing to do his will, working in our church that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for God's mercy through the prayer of confession. God, we confess that we don't always understand our own actions. We clearly know what is right, what you expect of us, but we don't always do it. We also clearly know what is wrong, the thoughts and actions that hurt others and offend you, but we do these things anyway. Forgive us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, set us free from the sin that causes us to stumble. In his name we pray. Amen. People of God, know this. Our God is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. When we stumble, he's there to catch us. When we're weighed down, God lifts us up so we can be at peace because our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Our scripture reading today is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11. This morning we're looking at verses 16 through 19 and then we'll jump to verses 25 through 30. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking. And they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Friends, this is the word of God. Thanks be to God. As we have on previous Communion Sundays, let's confess our faith by saying one of the creeds together. Today, we are using the new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, 
crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Well, here we are. Before I go too far, I want to start with a little caveat this morning. I promise not to make this a regular habit, but today feels different for me. And so I hope you will allow me a little room to make this message a little more personal than I normally might. Today, as I begin my tenure as your new minister, I feel led to share a, a little bit more personally than I normally would and normally will in a sermon. Today, I want to share a little bit with you about my own walk with God, and, and my hope is that it might help you to understand my approach to ministry, a bit of the method in my madness. Next week, I promise the sermons will get back to normal. Eleven years ago, right about now actually, you were calling me to be your new youth and family minister. At that same time, I was in the midst of my studies, and one of my professors said to me, actually wrote this note to me. He said, as you go, this is your calling, Diane. Leading, walking with, pointing the direction to the welcoming arms of God. Leading, walking with, and pointing towards our loving God. That is really the heart of what I love about ministry. And the times that I have been able to do that amongst you, well, they have been times that have been the source of some of the deepest joy I've ever known in my life. I know that there are some who probably think I'm a little wacky, but I actually believe in a personal God, a God who is guiding and leading us towards this dream of life that he has for us. And so at its heart, my ministry amongst you will be about helping us all to discern together God's presence with us and God's leading. And then to figure out how to respond to it so that we can truly walk with God and with the Spirit's help, live out our mission to follow Jesus Christ. So how do we do that? How do we discern God's leading together? Now I know there's many of you who do this well. Lots of you have been doing it a lot longer than I have. And we need that wealth of wisdom spread amongst our congregation in order to do this well together in the coming years. In my own experience of, of trying to, to learn how to sense and follow God's leading, I've actually found that our scripture reading for today can be a really, really good guide for us in this. This reading from Matthew, particularly the final three verses, has really become a guiding text in my life and particularly in my work. It's a passage that has tended to pop up for me at significant times in my life, often times that are new beginnings of something. The very first time this happened was 11 years ago as I was preparing to be your new youth and family minister. And then it started to pop up again a few years ago as we were considering running the apprentice study groups. And again, I started to see it repeatedly when I was starting my supervised ministry in preparation for ordination. If this has become enough of a pattern for me now, that I actually find it really encouraging and comforting when I start to run into these verses again. It feels as if God is trying to tell me that somehow in my stumbling along, 
I'm actually maybe moving in the right direction as, as I try to follow Jesus. Well, our administrator and my friend and your friend, Adele, has watched this happen over the years. And in her wisdom, she and some friends had these verses from Matthew made into a beautiful sign that they gave me at my ordination. That sign hangs in my study at home, right beside my desk. And God uses it to remind me regularly about how we can find and, and follow his leading together. So that gives you a bit of the history of, of my experiences with this reading. And now that you know that, you will not be surprised to hear that when I was preparing my first preaching plan and, and went to the lectionary to see what the texts were, looked at the gospel reading for today, and discovered that in that prescribed set of readings, our text from Matthew was this one. It seems, friends, that now you're part of this. God has done it again. And so here we are, listening together for his word through these verses to us for today. Well, let's just focus on those last three verses, verses 28 through 30. And, and this time I want to read to you those verses from the Message Translation. It's a more contemporary translation of the Bible that can be helpful at times to help us understand what scripture is saying in our context today. Here's how those three verses read in the message. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. These are Jesus' words to us. And in this reading, Jesus is saying, here's how you do this. Here's how you follow me. He says, walk with me. Work with me. There will be work. It won't always be easy. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Isn't that a beautiful phrase? And, and it's that phrase that I have found so guiding and so important. It describes how we see Jesus living and how he's teaching us to live. At first, it just sounds beautiful and poetic and, and so sometimes a little obscure. So I think it's helpful to unpack it a bit, starting with that very first word, unforced. He says that as we follow him, we won't have the sense of being forced or as he described, of anything being ill-fitting. Well, that word actually makes me think back to that famous story of David and Goliath. Remember as David was preparing to go and fight the giant, some well-meaning people tried to put Saul's armor on him, the king's armor, but it didn't work. David tried to walk around in it, but he couldn't. It was too big for him. It was a grown man's armor. And it, it, and it just didn't feel right. He was not used to armor. So he took it off. And he picked up the tools he was used to as a shepherd. He picked up his staff. And he picked up his slingshot. And he picked up some rocks. He knew that it would not work for him to try to use Saul's stuff. He could only use what he knew how to use. Well, Jesus is saying to each of us, I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. So just like David, God has and will equip each of us with tools, tools for living this life with him 
tools that are particularly fitting, and dare I say, maybe even fitted for each of us. Different tools for different people, but all of them unforced, nothing ill-fitting. Well, then we have that beautiful phrase that follows, the unforced rhythms of grace. What does Jesus mean by this? Let me give you an image to try to explain my sense of it. One of my favorite summertime activities here in Qualicum is floating down the little Qualicum River for a couple of hours in the heat of a summer day you can just lie on your air mattress or sit in your inner tube in the cool water and relax as you are gently carried downstream. You don't need to paddle or kick at all. The current carries you, winding in and around as you slowly make your way out to the ocean. It's a lovely thing to do. It's relaxing and it is strangely freeing. That whole metaphor of, of floating down the river, that's what comes to my mind as I consider what, what Jesus means when he talks about these unforced rhythms of grace. Being carried along by the grace of God's presence and God's leading in our lives. Not having to try to make anything happen, but responding as we are led one way or the other. And in doing that, discovering as Jesus promises that we really are learning to live freely and lightly. So friends, as we begin this new chapter of our lives together, I wanted you to know about this passage and that for me, it has been a good guide in, in how to discern and follow God's leading. So in those times, and they will come when we are trying to discern how God might be leading us, it might help you to know that I will probably be asking myself, and I may even ask you, does this feel like those rhythms of grace? Does it feel as if we are being carried by and responding to something that is more than us, to the Spirit of God in our midst? Friends, let's listen for and watch for that grace, that sense that God is doing something, that it's not just us and our energy and our ideas. Now, we won't always be sure whether it's God or not. In fact, we might never be sure. I think that's the faith part. The good news is it's also the grace part. Because God doesn't need us to be perfect. And so we are free to try, try our best, wonder together if maybe, just maybe, it's God moving, leading, and walking with us. Friends, a little earlier in this service, we said our United Church of Canada new creed, and we concluded with those words, God is with us. We are not alone. It's an incredible affirmation, and it is the heart of the promise of our faith that we believe in a God who is with us. So it would make sense that we risk a bit and we try together to watch for those signs of God's presence and even more of God's leading. Those unforced rhythms of God's amazing grace that I think Jesus wanted to remind us about this morning. Amen. Good morning and happy past Canada Day. Would you join me in these prayers for the people? 
Lord God, we give you great thanks for standing with us during this time of uncertainty and change. You provided health care workers and so many support workers to sustain us in every aspect of our lives during this pandemic. You've stimulated innovation in your people to find ways we can continue to live our lives and thrive. You have supported us in forming and sustaining relationships with each other and sometimes strangers. You have encouraged us to take measures needed to push back infection rates from this nasty virus. You are a great God. Reflecting back over the years, we give thanks for the work of Reverend Phil Spencer among us. We ask a blessing upon him as he makes his transition into in retirement. We pray for peace and rest for him as he discerns what he is called to next. Bring him a sense of joy and fulfillment. Protect his family. You are a great God. This morning, we celebrate the call of our new lead pastor, Reverend Diane Collery. What a wonderful gift you have provided for us. Support her as she uses all the talent and skill which you've developed in her. Encourage and sustain her confidence as she works among us. Protect her family. You are a great God. We pray for Canada and our community. Give wisdom to our politicians and public health officers. Thank you for providing Dr. Henry at such a time as this. Bless the work of the councils and churches. Bless those who struggle to open up their businesses while protecting us and their staff. Continue to teach us the importance of patience and kindness. You are a great God. We pray for progress in countries where the COVID cases continue to grow, especially our neighbor, the USA. Help the politicians of these countries see the suffering and grow in them compassionate hearts. Give them ears to hear and the resources to utilize. You are a great God. Continue to open our hearts to the suffering and needs of others. Provide safety and accommodation for those who are without homes. Move the hearts of those who believe that persons of color, those of other faiths, and those of other genders are lesser. In your eyes, God, they are all your people and to be honored and respected given seats at the head of your table. Open our hearts to see the pain of racism. Rid each of us of this scourge. You are a great God. Now I would urge you to just take a minute and offer up any personal prayers that you have. With joy and confidence, let us join together in saying the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Friends, once again, we thank you for your faithful giving to the work we are doing through St. Stephen's. Will you join me now in saying a prayer committing the gifts you've given this week to God and to God's work in the world? Gracious God, you call us to let go of the things we cling to and step out in faith trusting in your love and provision. Give us courage to step out boldly and sufficient faith to follow without fear. Take our lives and our gifts. Use them to accomplish more than we could possibly imagine so that through us, your kingdom might come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Friends, this is the table of the risen Christ. We come to this table with great gratitude to say thank you to the one who invites each of us here, the one who is himself the root of our joy, the one who is the promise of God for all creation, the one who is for us both savior and friend. Friends, join me at Jesus' table. God is with us. We are not alone. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Creator, Christ, and Spirit, we praise you for your love revealed to us in Jesus, who walks with us, our wisdom and our way, sharing our joy and sorrow, healing the sick, feeding the hungry, and setting the captives free. So it is that we join the song of all creation and proclaim your goodness. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Because you, gracious God, have been faithful to us, we will be faithful to Jesus. He promised to be with those who met in his name. This we believe. He promised to hear the prayers of faithful people. This we believe. He said that in the communion of bread and wine, he would be present to us as we remember him. This we celebrate. And together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So send now your spirit among us and upon this bread and wine, that we may taste and see your goodness, be embraced by your love, and be engaged in your service. Amen. As Jesus did, so we do. We break this bread. We share this wine. We believe that he who lived died and rose again for us and will meet us here. So graciously nourish us, O Christ, so that we who try to follow you may receive food for the journey and be bound in unity with all who walk in your way. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours everywhere now and forever. Amen. Friends, please join me in saying the prayer Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, this is the body of Christ, and it was broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ, and it was poured out for you, for the forgiveness of sin. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. join me in saying together the prayer after communion. Generous and faithful God, you have fed us at your table. May the nourishment we have received enable us to enrich the lives of others wherever we may go from here. Whether the future be dark or bright, the road be smooth or rough, whether our cares be light or heavy, our song be strong or weak. Keep our hearts warm and our hands open, our lives ever embracing and ever embraced by your love. Amen. I have a few announcements today. Well, I have two, and there's one more. Uh, the first one I have is many of you will have heard about the sudden and very sad passing of Pat Grace this last week. It's a strange time and we can't do funerals the way or memorials the way we normally do and, and we're not sure what her family's plans are, but we would ask you to please keep Pat's family in your prayers. It's July and so even though our office isn't physically open, as you know it's very much operating out of Adele's home, but we are still going to move to our summer office hours, which means that if you're calling the office, please try to do that in the morning because Adele's gonna to try to take the afternoons off if she can. And there is one more announcement from Phil. Hi again, friends. 
at the risk of being like that bad penny that never seems to go away, always turns up. Uh, I've, one last thing. I want to thank you so much for Sunday. I was completely clueless that it was going to happen. And so I was surprised throughout the day at, at the events. And, and I so appreciated it. At the end of the day, I was pretty sure that a bunch of people loved me. And wow, that was amazing. So thank you so much. Um, I'm going to be around town. I'm not moving anywhere. So uh, I look forward to seeing you all. Let's stop. Let's chat. Let's just be friends. Friends, go and be the living expression of God's kindness. Kindness in your face. Kindness in your eyes. Kindness in your smile. Kindness in your warm greeting. And as you go, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may God look upon you with kindness and grant you peace. Amen.